Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to yet another video. And have you ever been interested in getting into Warhammer 40,000 but just have never known where to start? Or even worse, seen those price tags and realized that you don't want to remortgage your house just to buy an army of tiny, yet awesome little dudes. Yeah, I know that feeling. But it seems that lately the guys over at Games Workshop have really been listening and have finally answered that call with this right here. Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. So you may or may not know what this right here is, so I'll keep it brief and to the point. Kill Team is a fast-paced tabletop roleplay war game where small elite squads face off. And yes, I said small elite squads. So that means finally you don't have to drop hundreds of dollars or euro or quat loose or whatever you have in order to dive into the awesome tabletop game that is Warhammer 40k. Which honestly is awesome. All you need is a few little guys and you are good to go. So what I'll be taking a look at today is the box starter set, which honestly is the best place to start if you're starting fresh into the hobby, just don't have the models and terrain to get started, or just looking for an absolutely killer value tabletop game. I grabbed this over at elementgames.co.uk where it cost me only 76 euro, considering that it's 105 euro off the official Games Workshop site, that's quite a steal. I highly recommend these guys as their service and prices are fantastic and of course if you'd like to support the channel there is an affiliate link down there in the description. But anyway, back to the review. So as for what you get in this box, you get two starter kill teams which are the Adeptus Mechanicus, basically humans with so many biomechanical modifications they're barely human anymore that literally prey to machines, and the Gene Stealer Cults which are bald men. Well, bald alien-human hybrids that are the first stage of a huge alien invasion that literally strips planets of all biological matter, but in this box, they're just bald men with guns. As well as that, you get absolutely everything you need to get started, which is a double-sided gaming board, a ton of terrain, in this case it's runes of imperial buildings, the full rule book for the game including all the rules you need to put together kill teams of 16 different factions, dice, instructions for assembling your team, two books which feature pre-designed kill teams that you can just make if you have no imagination, but I will mention you can make your own custom teams, which is a whole lot more fun. Lastly, we have gameplay tokens for both teams, general tactics cards, tactics cards for both teams, and data cards for individual squad members. And of course, the kill teams themselves. As for the actual plastic in this box, you get enough to make a 10-man team of both Gene Stealers and Admech with lots of options and quite a bit of leftover plastic. They have even included the two Ziploc bags. How thoughtful. So first off is the Gene Stealer cult. You could just build the Devoted Sons as they're shown right here, or you could have fun creating your own completely unique team. In the box you get a 10-man squad of neophyte hybrids, so that means with this box you don't actually have access to the other squad choices, such as the Acolytes, Aberrants, or the Hybrid Metamorphs. For these particular guys you will have to go out and shell out more cash, and oh I see what you're doing there Games Workshop, you sly scallywags. However, as for the Aberrants, as of right now you can't actually buy these at all as they only ever came out in a now discontinued board game called Death Watch Overkill. However, a release is probably on the horizon with the release of the actual 40k codex. I honestly enjoyed building these guys so much, I actually just made one of my own from leftover parts I had lying around. That's the glory of this hobby, you can literally just make your own models. As for the kill team I made, I just went the random route. For each faction, there's a set of random generation tables you can use to generate a kill team, which starts with their background, I got a 9 so that means they're snare setters, so they love them some booby traps. For their mission I rolled feed the progeny, which means they require meat for their aberrant brethren, and as for their squad quirk I got creeping killers, which means they stalk the shadows and drag their victims into the darkness, all of which kind of lined up perfectly strangely perfect. They set traps, stalk in the shadows, and hunt for meat. Awesome. Essentially your kill team needs one leader and three specialists, and for these guys there's a generator table for their demeanors and their name. So with this and the squad's background in mind, my kill team squad members are the leader Ganner Gorl, a tunnel spawn who's blind, seized by tasting the air with his tongue, and is armed with a web pistol which shoots out a net to ensnare his prey, and a power maul for tenderizing that fresh fresh meat. As for the three specialists, and speaking of which there are multiple types of specialists that actually have a leveling system and a skill tree, but I'm not going to get into into that in this video. The specialists are Zask Novek, a scout armed with a shotgun that has a predatory instinct to prey on the weak and injured, Foy Lashka, who's a medic armed with a big net shooting cannon, 
He's an enlightener, which means he prefers to take his prey alive in order to turn them also into gene stealer hybrids. Lastly, then, is Hazron Desh, a lunatic with a flamethrower who believes today is not his day to die because he's destined to ascend to join the Blessed Star Children. As for the rest of the non specialist characters, I let my wife name them, so I present to you Hashed Beef, Pool Noodle, Cheer Beer, Trisha Paytas, I'm Quaking, and Laser Geezer. So, moving on to the ad mech, and what we get is essentially what we got in Forge Bane. A standard 10-man squad of Skitari, which can be assembled as either Vanguard or Rangers, so once again this box doesn't give you access to the full squad roster. At this point I will mention something I myself was curious about before actually getting my hands on this box, and that is, does the colour affect the quality of the plastic? And the short answer is, mmm, not really. It definitely feels more brittle and not as soft and buttery as the standard Grey Games Workshop plastic, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on the actual sharpness and definition of the mould. It's a bit more of a pain to clean up the mold lines and nipper marks, but it seems like no detail has been sacrificed, and that's the important thing. However, a major positive point is while unpainted, it really does make it a whole lot easier to tell the squads apart on the battlefield, and I'm the king of unpainted models, so that is a huge, huge help. As for the terrain you get in here, it is nothing short of glorious. Once again, this is cast in colour, a kind of greeny beige, and I will mention that cleaning up the lines and nub marks on this amount of plastic is quite literally torture. I will mention right here that that this is actually quite difficult to put together. I've spent the last five plus years building model kit after model kit after model kit, as well as some of the Sector Mechanicus and the old Imperial Sector buildings, and I have to say, it was really tough keeping all the parts lined up correctly, so in the end it all fit together perfectly. And I actually advise not building it in the order shown in the manual. Build it upside down starting with all the square flooring sections, that way you have something to line all the walls up with. But honestly, don't worry too much about it, as it seems games work workshop themselves can't really get them right either. So finally, once everything is built, you're ready to go. All you need is a friend to play with. Yeah, I played my first game against myself. At least I won though. Then the second match I played was against my wife and she handed my ass to me. As for the game itself, once you get the rules down, it should last about 30 to 40 minutes and there are multiple game styles such as open play, match play, narrative play and various different mission types. The first mission in the rulebook is open play covert war, so let's go with that. Open play means each team can use whatever models you want without worrying too much about balance and squad limitations just to get a game started quickly and covert war is essentially a king of the hill style play, so let's get started. The game begins by setting up your battlefield. To do this, both players, or more depending on how many are playing, roll off to see who has the strategic advantage. Whoever gets the strategic advantage, get to place an objective marker, followed by the next player. After that, an objective is rolled for, and for the sake of brevity here, we'll go with the first one, which is basically hold both points to win. Simple. Before the actual game starts, there's the scouting phase, which represents the success of your kill team's planning. You choose one of six strategies, in secret of course, that affects the start of the game, and some counteract each other. For example, you could choose to set traps in some terrain pieces, but there's also the choice to disarm traps, which obviously counters the plant trap strategy, nullifying it. From here, the battlefield is divided into halves, or more depending on the amount of players, that could be in any direction, and all players then take it in turns to deploy their teams. Then the game begins, and this one in particular lasts 5 rounds. As for the game proper, it's divided into 6 phases, initiative, movement, psychic, shooting, fight and morale. As neither of these armies included in the box have any psychers, the third phase, the psychic phase, is pretty much ignored. The first phase, initiative phase, is where both players roll to see who goes first. Simple. In the movement phase, starting with the player with initiative, both players take it in turns moving one of their models at a time, and they can choose to either make a standard move, not move and ready their weapons, advance, which means you can move further but won't be able to do anything in the later battle rounds, or charge an enemy to fight them in close combat. Skipping the psychic phase and we've got the shooting phase. Just like in the movement phase, players take turns starting with the player with initiative. Characters that have readied in the previous phase get the tactical advantage of shooting first, followed by characters that have moved. Multiple factors affect the outcome of shooting attacks. If you're familiar with 40k, this is essentially exactly what you're used to, with some minor tweaks, especially that range and cover have a very profound effect on how easy or difficult it is to hit an enemy with your ranged attacks. After the shooting phase is the fight phase, which is extremely similar to the shooting phase, except of course you resolve the attacks between models in close combat. And just like in the shooting phase, where characters who readied get to shoot first, 
In this phase, characters who charged in the fighting phase have the tactical advantage of resolving their attacks first. Lastly then is the morale phase, where essentially if your team has taken a whoopin, your team has a chance to lose morale and end up broken where characters end up with negative modifiers to roll, or even become shaken where they can do absolutely nothing at all. And from there you just rinse and repeat all six battle phases over and over again for the five rounds and whoever has both objectives is the winner. Of course this right here is a massive oversimplification of the game for example sakes. Your leader and your specialist have abilities, you have command points you can spend on tactics that can greatly shape the direction the battle is going, there are tons of different mission types and you can even shape all your battles into a continuous campaign where your kill team members can gain experience, can become injured, or even die. All in all, this is a damn fun game, and once you get all the rules down, you can bang out a battle easily in under an hour. Something you definitely can't say about the full-blown version of 40k. Games Workshop have been trying to get the whole skirmish game right for a couple of years now, with 2016's version of Kill Team, 2017's Shadow War Armageddon, and now this. Personally, I've never played either of those games, so I can't compare it to them, so the only thing similar I would have played, of course, is Warhammer 40,000 itself, as well as Necromunda. And to me, I feel Kill Team falls somewhere in between. It's not as long-winded as 40k, where you control big, big armies, and players take it in turns to move, shoot, and attack, with their entire army. But at the same time, it's not quite as natural, dynamic and reactive as Necromunda, where players take it in turns to carry out all the actions of one character at a time. But so far, I have to say, I am digging it. If you're interested in 40k, this is the absolute perfect place to start. It's a complete self-contained game, fast-paced and fun. The models can be used in actual games of Warhammer 40k, and it includes two squads, so you can go halves with a friend to save on costs, or use it to host some game nights to get your friends addicted as well. If you're already a 40k player, it's a refreshing break from the size, scope and time-consuming games of 40k. And hey, honestly, it's worth it just for all that sweet, sweet plastic. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Again, if you're interested in picking one up of your own, you can support the channel at the same time by using that affiliate link down there in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.